Hello, I'm Dr. Hafsa. Today, my focus will be on providing a comprehensive overview of diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic and long-lasting condition that happens when your blood sugar or glucose is too high. It happens when your pancreas doesn't make enough or any insulin at all or when the body isn't responding to the effects of insulin properly. Let's discuss how. There are two types of diabetes, but before that, there is a stage known as the pre-diabetic stage in which the blood glucose levels are higher than normal, but not high enough to be officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. What happens is whenever you intake something, the glucose is released into the blood. And to counterbalance that, a certain amount of insulin is released. And this is the normal process. But if you take excess amount of insulin glucose, excess amount of insulin is needed to counterbalance that. When this keeps on happening and the difference between the glu insulin released to the glucose that is released into the bloodstream, when this difference keeps on increasing, there comes a time when the glucose cannot be counterbalanced and that is the stage known as the type 2 diabetic stage. In type 1 diabetes, there is an autoimmune process in which the body's immune cells or the immune system attacks and destroys the insulin producing cells of the pancreas. The beta cells in the pancreas produce insulin and they are attacked by the T cells of the body. This is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. When this happens, there is no insulin produced inside the body. And insulin is needed for the glucose to enter the cells. For instance, this is the cell and the door of this cell is right here. The key to the door is the insulin. But if there's no insulin, there will be no key to the door and the glucose is unable to go inside the cell. When this happens, the glucose keeps on moving inside the bloodstream and this raises the amount of glucose, hence diabetes. Whereas in type 2, the body doesn't make enough insulin or the body's cells do not respond normally to the insulin, which is known as the insulin resistance. In this, the cell of the body has certain membrane transporters of glucose. These membrane transporters do not attach to the cell of cell wall and due to which or if they do, they are not functional. When this happens, the glucose is unable to attach itself and get inside the cell. So basically, there is an insulin resistance or this is known as the insulin resistance. There are several factors and conditions which contribute to varying degrees of insulin resistance. For example, obesity, lack of exercise, hypertension, and sometimes genetics. Autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes, as we discussed before, and latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. Basically, this is sometimes referred as type 1.5 because it has features of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So it can have autoimmune uh, processes in it and insulin resistance both. Hormonal imbalances, uh, for example, during pregnancy, the placenta releases the hormone that causes insulin resistance and this leads to gestational diabetes. Pancreatic damage, which occurs uh, as a result of a physical insult, which is uh, due to uh, any kind of surgery or injury can impact the ability of pancreas to produce insulin. This is also known as type 3C diabetes. Genetic mutations uh, like HNF4 
for alpha can lead to maturity onset diabetes of young and neonatal diabetes. Long term use of certain medications like uh, the medications of HIV AIDS and corticosteroids can also lead to diabetes. Thankfully, there are a few symptoms that help us diagnose a patient with diabetes. For example, the patient is always tired because the glucose is unable to enter the cell due to which no energy is generated. And when no energy is generated, the body is always fatigued and the person always feels tired. There's frequent urination. This happens because when there is a lot of glucose in the bloodstream, there is a signal to the kidney to filter this glucose out of the body. When this happens, a lot of water goes out with this. And due to this, a lot of urination occurs. When this happens, the person feels thirsty all the time. Other than this, the person can have a blurry vision because whenever there is any change in the fluid levels of the body the lens of the eye swells up when this lens swells up the vision becomes blurry other uh, symptoms like numbness or tingling in hands or feet can occur due to neuropathy and as the vessels to the organs get damaged over time, it can lead to sexual dysfunctions like erectile dysfunction and uh, loss of libido and many other things. And because the body is unable to produce energy, the person always feels hungry because there is an energy debt in the body. To diagnose diabetes, we generally use three tests. The first one is fasting blood glucose, in which you don't eat or drink anything except water for at least eight hours, preferably 12 hours, as food can greatly affect the blood sugar levels and this allows the provider to see the baseline blood sugar levels. In a normal person, the blood sugar levels should be less than 100. In a pre-diabetic person, these levels will be between 100 to 125. But if they are more than 126, this means that you are diabetic. A random blood glucose means that you can get this test done anytime regardless of the fact that you have eaten or not. And a value of more than 200 indicates diabetes. An HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin test provides an average blood glucose level over the past two to three months. And in clinical practice, this test is generally used uh, to diagnose a patient with diabetes. A normal patient will have the value below 5.7% or 39 millimole per mole, whereas the pre-diabetic stage starts from 5.7 to 6.4 and the diabetic state starts from more than 6.5 or 6.5 that is 48 millimole per mole managing diabetes can be challenging but the first and the foremost thing is the diet the diet should include low carbs it should not have refined grains like white rice or bread it can include fruits vegetables whole grains and low fat milk other than this Exercise also plays a pivotal role in increasing the insulin sensitivity.
and type 2 diabetic patients should have a regular uh, regimen of exercise. You can monitor your blood glucose levels with a glucometer at home and this gives the healthcare provider uh, the best blood sugar range for you. This decides whether you need oral diabetic medications or insulin. Oral diabetic medications help manage the blood sugar levels in people who have diabetes but still produce some amount of insulin, like type 2 diabetics and pre-diabetes. Diabetic, sorry. People with gestational diabetes also need oral medications like metformin, which is the most common medicine and generally we start off the patients with metformin. Other than this, sulfonylureas, thiazolidine diodes and GLP-1 agonists can also be given. I can make a separate video on these medicines, how and when they are given. People with type 1 diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes have to have insulin. There is no other option for them. But some people with type 2 diabetes also require insulin. And there are several different types of synthetic insulin and, and they start to work at different speeds. They last in your body at different for different lengths of time. For example, the injectable insulin that can be rapid, short acting and long acting. Diabetes comes with many complications. For example, brain stroke, cardiovascular diseases, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy and diabetic retinopathy. All of these occur when there is a damage to the blood vessels and the nerves. The small blood vessels supplying the nerves get damaged due to which the nerves eventually are deprived of the oxygen supply and the blood supply. Along with the diabetic retinopathy, eyes can develop cataract and glaucoma in patients with diabetes. Periodontal diseases can occur when there is increased amount of glucose in the saliva which helps the bad bacteria to grow. This with the food forms a sticky layer over the teeth leading to plaque formation. This plaque leads to tooth decay, bad breath and cavities. Foot damage can also occur when the nerves are damaged there is a decreased sensation. When there is a decreased sensation in the foot, small injuries go unnoticed and when this happens, the injury becomes bigger and bigger. And as we know that the blood supply is also damaged, uh, is also unable to provide enough oxygen for the injury to heal, this eventually leads to gangrene and amputation is needed. I hope this video was easy to understand. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.